Hello, hello! I just realized it's been a while since I've actually made a proper gameplay guide. I've done a couple of them in the past, like how to how to use offensive smokes and stuff like that, and how to how to use torp spreads and such. But I figured now that there's this interesting new DD called the Law Yang in the game, I've already made a commentary on it, but I didn't really go into in depth on how to actually use the hydroacoustic search on it. So this game I thought would be a good example. I got placed into T10 matchmaking. I'm against the Gearing, a Fletcher, a Kagero, and a Fubuki. And I don't have the 15 point captain, meaning my concealment is garbage. So I will show you how even with my crap concealment, I'm able to completely outplay and destroy these destroyers, even though I lack firepower, health, pretty much everything. But I do have one thing, Hydroacoustic Surge, and I know how to use it. First of all, you need to understand that there's a proximity spotting mechanic in this game. If you're within two kilometers of another ship, you will spot him and he will spot you regardless of smoke and obstacles. Hydroacoustic Surge increases this to 3.5. That means you have this golden sweet spot that is from 2 kilometers to 3.5 kilometers. If you're in a smoke and your enemy is within that range, they will not be able to see you, but you can see them. Now that's a golden rule you need to remember, because that's how you utilize Lo Yang Hydroacoustic Surge to the absolute maximum. Here I rush B. I'm confident that I will probably meet the DD coming from here at very soon. Detected. Okay, the Fletcher. He's almost in my golden sweet spot. I instantly pop smoke, I instantly pop hydroacoustic surge, and I slow down. I am undetected, he is detected by me. I can shoot at him, he has no idea where I am. He's launching blind torps, my hydra spots them. I already got torps going where he's going. I will easily dodge these torps. I'm raining down fire on him, he can't even see me. My hydra and my torps, bam, destroyed. That was the Fletcher, which is probably one of the strongest anti DD destroyers in the game. I didn't lose a single point of HP in that fight, and I completely destroyed him. There I utilized the combination of I was talking about. I made sure I stayed more than two kilometers distance away from him. That's why I reversed, also of course to dodge torps. But uh, I also made sure I was within 3.5 before I popped my Hydra and my smoke. Both at the same time, that's important. You want to synchronize those two cooldowns when you fight other DDs. That way you are able to gain this edge in detection over the enemy DDs. So if you're going to fight enemy DDs in the ship, you lack the gun power that the normal Benson has. It has an additional gun, which means it's stronger. It also has a bit more HP, again stronger. But if you manage to time your fight so that you get the enemy into that sweet spot, that 1.5 kilometer sweet spot, then you are god. Within those 1.5 kilometers you are a god. And that's the timing you want to utilize when fighting DDs. Now here, I'm basically just seeing if I could get vision of the uh, Oiva. Oh shit, there he is. Uh, noticed him a bit late, I think. Yeah, he's, I'm not going to be able to delay the cap. They have they have two DDs in there as well. They have a Kagera and a Gearing. Now, obviously since there's two DDs there, both the Kagera and the Gearing, I want to go there. Because the Lo Yang is, if you know how to utilize this trick, the Lo Yang is one of the best anti-DD destroyers in the entire game. Of course, like, uh, it lacks the raw firepower of the USDDs, but it has the Hydro. But you have to be so, so, so precise with how you use it to be able to gain this full advantage of it. Now, I don't really want to go in there yet. I'm basically, this is more of a scouting trip. I'm gonna see if I can, if they're maybe moving out of the cap, I can cap it. Oh, no, they're not moving out. The gearing is pushing up. I don't want to fight the gearing now. I don't have smoke. I don't have Hydra. In a straight up fight, if I would go now and pick a straight up fight with the gearing, he would absolutely melt me. It would completely destroy me, so I launched Torps. The Torps on this ship, uh, even though they're not very fast or hit that hard, you can launch 10 of them, which means you get this huge spread, which especially in DD versus DD fights is very very tough to avoid. It's uh, hard to dodge between those, you see how tight those, that spread is, especially at, at close range. It's very hard to dodge them completely, and usually people end up eating one or two torps. That's why I actually really like those torps. Now it looks like the gearing slowed down, or he just dodged behind the island before this land, because as I said, they are very slow. I'm still not gonna engage though, I'm not in a hurry. Now my smoke is up, I'm gonna start moving towards there. But I'm not in a hurry yet, as you see I'm slowing down. 
I don't want to engage them until my Hydro is up. Because then I can once again utilize that golden golden sweet spot. Okay, here we go. I don't see. I, I think the gearing dip behind the island, so I'll see if I can ambush this Kagero here. Oh, Torps, they know, or at least suspect, I'm here. It's gonna be close. Whew, barely dodged. Waiting for C. Oh, there he is. He's in the golden sweet spot. Pop smoke, pop hydro, back off. The gearing is here as well. So it was good as I did this. Instantly full reverse. You see how he's closing in. He's closing in on that 2 kilometer proximity spotting distance. I don't want him to do that. I don't want him to spot me for the gearing. So I keep reversing, keep reversing. Shit, he's about to get within... He's within 2 kilometers. He's spotting me for the gearing. Need to kill him fast. Nice, he's dead. I'm once again undetected. Aiming for the front guns on that... Uh, Gearing now. He's torping, of course, but I'm aiming for the front guns. I know how fragile they are. And I'm moving out of his torps. I've already done so much damage to him. I got torps going at this close range. Nice, I damaged one of. I've no, actually, I think I broke it completely. Yeah, he's completely screwed. And bam. Both a Kagero and a Gearing and a Fletcher kill in this game so far. I still have 10k HP left. In fact, I could have probably stayed in the smoke and killed that guy completely from uh, protection, but I was a bit leery about staying still there when he was closing the distance and because he had torps coming. So, I already knew I had him low enough and I, I had already damaged his back turret there and I made sure my gun, my shots landed on the front part of the gearing because one of the major weaknesses of the gearing is it has two huge turrets in the front. So if you land shells on the front, you are more than likely to disable or even outright destroy them. Now I'm going to scavenge the smoke that someone left behind. I can pr actually almost stealth fire. Well, I, I think the ship stealth fire from like 10.4. So I could almost stealth fire from here, but whatever. Just to be safe, there was a spotter plane here earlier. If it's still around, I don't want it spotting me. So I just go into the smoke and I cap and see if I can get a fire on this Iowa while I do this. Get a bit of uh, harassment going. This should be an easy capture for me. Just raining down fire. This game is very close, as you can see, they actually have a bit of a lead right now. In fact, our only three kills are the three DDs, which I have killed. My team hasn't killed anything else. So, at this point, it very much feels like I'm going to. I'm pretty much carrying this game, keeping us in it. Both the, our only two caps are also the two caps I have taken, <laughs> and only kills are the kills I have gotten. So, yeah. Considering I'm a T8 ship that's thrown into T10 matchmaking, uh, not bad. Oh, the Fubuki got killed just now by the Shimakaze. So that means there are no more DDs left for me to kill. This cap, I don't see much point in trying to hold it right now, because uh, they have an Admiral Hipper pushing up. And uh, if the Admiral Hipper has absolutely any idea how to play, and meaning he has Hydroacoustic Search, applied. The German Hydra is far superior to my Hydra and well honestly you don't want to get in a straight up firefight with a cruiser. You're just gonna get destroyed. So I'm basically just abandoning that cap and I'm gonna see if I can help secure A instead because that's the only spot we don't have capped. Not to mention there's only US uh, cruisers back there. Well they get, have a lot of firepower, a lot of armor. Those things don't really matter much to you since you're all about being undetected and well torps. Let's see, this New Orleans looks... Oh, our Des Moines killed the Kutuzov. Once again, they're still leading... No, actually, we're even in ships now. But we have the cap advantage, thanks to me getting B so early. And also securing C now. Oh, are we gonna cap A? Eh? No, our Shimakaze got hit. Okay, then I'll make sure we secure A for our team. I'm not really certain what this Ibuki is doing. And it's land not really certain what either of these cruisers are doing inside B. You'd think they would go and help at A instead of pushing into a cap that we already have. But yeah, I don't really understand. Our Fletcher is trying to delay the Admiral Hipper and Iowa, which is admirable, but uh, I don't see him landing honestly any torps if the Hipper is using Hydra. Or highly unlikely he will land anything. There's a Shimo smoke. Can I maybe go scavenge it? 
to use it to shoot at the Des Moines, since the Des Moines is obviously the biggest threat here. I'm confident in my cruiser's abilities to deal with the New Orleans, but the Des Moines, that's a whole different beast. If, it, if the Des Moines has any idea how to shoot, especially when he's already this close, he should be able to melt this. Oh, the smoke faded. Never mind then, then I'm just gonna go here. I'm gonna pop my own smoke, I think. Oh, that's New Orleans. I'm, not, I'm actually not gonna shoot where the white marker is showing. I'm shooting a bit ahead of it, since I, I'm gonna offensive smoke and start firing, so I expect him to start turning slightly away. Because he doesn't want to go into the smoke where the shells are coming from. So that's why I didn't shoot where the white marker was suggesting. Instead I shot a bit ahead. Yeah, as you can see, as soon as I started firing, he actually angled his ship a bit more away from me. So my guess is that my torps are probably going to be able to catch him out. He's still angling a bit away. This is all pretty much predicted at this point. That's the kind of thing you don't always want to trust blindly in the white uh, spread because you have to take into account what the enemy will do between you firing and you actually launching the torps and the torps actually arriving. I'm getting, just landing some shells on him but uh, yeah, he's gonna get caught by my torps. That's why you don't always fire straight where the white line is telling because that's not necessarily always correct. So I'm gonna secure that kill and I've helped secure the cap for us. Now the biggest problem, the Des Moines. Need to help my team with him definitively. Oh shit. My shells decided they didn't want to go over the cliff. Even though I had him locked in. I'm using the I'm waiting for the Ibuki to spot him for me. Since the Ibuki will soon should soon have a line of sights on him, which would help me basically land some shells on him. They managed to recapture C and force away the Fletcher, no surprise, that was exactly what I expected since they had a German cruiser there. For some reason I'm lately seeing a lot of German cruisers running uh, defensive AA, I have no idea why. Like, you see, you see CVs so rarely, whereas you see DDs every single game. I guess they don't really fully understand the strength of the consumable. Just helping him out, see if I can get some fires on him. You gotta remember when you're shooting a T10 ship, uh, they have a much higher fire resistance coefficient, which means that uh, basically when you shoot a T10 ship, you have less. Uh, you basically can cut in half your fire chance because they, they their ship is resistant. My smoke ran out and I was detected for a second. Now I'm undetected. This is my stealth fire range. I think it's 10.3 if you don't have the cap 10 point. He dodged the Ibuki Torps. I really haven't had any luck with fires on him. In fact, my fire luck has been absolutely abysmal. If you look at my hits, I have 124 hits and one fire. So RNG has definitely not been working in my favor here. Now, once again, I expect the Des Moines to, once he goes around that island, I expect him to charge straight towards my last known location. That's why I launched those torps, basically stack them on top of each other, so that uh, he can't angle his ship between them, but he'll have to eat one of them. You see how tightly packed I launched those torps? Basically, the second volley goes into the gaps of the first volley, which makes it impossible to slip between them without eating at least one torp. That's the idea of basically the double stacked torp like that. So, he's, he basically did exactly what I predicted him to do, so I expect him to eat at least one torpedo. At this point, all I want to do is prevent him from capping, because I want us to win the game, we're very close to the points. Now I need to wait behind this island until my firing debuff disappears. One torp hit, defend at the base, that's good. He's plane spotted me, but by the firing debuff should disappear any second, it's 20 seconds long, so it should disappear. There we go, now I can pop out of the island, and he can't see me. Yeah, see, he was waiting there, but because he has no idea where I am, his shells missed. Now, just before I get into cover, I'm going to prevent his cap one more time. Wait, timing it right, there we go. Now if he fires back, I'm already in cover. And I prevented his cap again. And we're about to win the game now. And we won the game. That is how you utilize the Lo Yang. And, well, it was my first win of the day. Since about that's my first Lo Yang game today, so I got a nice 16k XP, which is always nice. Credits, it's a, of course a premium ship, so 912k. Base XP, 3.5k. 
Which is pretty nice considering I beat stuff like Shimas and stuff. Or actually, they had a much better setup than we did with the uh, T10s. But we still managed to beat them, which is always nice. As you see, the damage isn't really that special. But then again, if you're playing a US destroyer, damage shouldn't be your main focus in the first place. Anyway, that was my short guide. I hope you guys enjoyed it.